Think of an MA1 process. I could write an MA1 process which was yt is equal to et plus theta et minus 1. Right? I have I, I, I got it. Okay. For example, think of this one. This process I showed you could be written as if this is an invertible process, if this process is an invertible process, this process can be written as yt. You can do this, sorry, 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 sorry. It can, can be written as, I'm sorry, it can be written as E T plus theta Y T minus 1. So one we can write this. We just saw that. Which means that Y T now depends directly on Y T minus 1, Y T minus 2, Y T minus 3, Y T minus 4, add infinitum. So yt is directly correlated with yt minus 1 and yt minus 2 and yt minus 3 and yt minus 4 and yt minus 5 so on. But what are the correlations? Theta, theta square, theta cube, theta raised to 4. So it's an invertible process meaning theta is less than 1 in absolute value. This correlation will keep on becoming smaller and smaller and smaller but indirect, direct correlation will exist for infinitely long lags. Right? So the partial autocorrelation for an MA1 process will taper off. So for this process, for example, autocovariance will exist only at lag 1. Partial autocovariances, co-correlations will keep on tapering off. Whereas if you have an AR1 process, which is stationary, then we saw that the partial autocorrelation will only exist at lag 1 and the autocovariance function will taper off. Is this clear? Right? Is this clear? So that's why, okay. so I just write this distinction down. Okay? I just write this distinction down. <laughs> I'll write this distinction down. Very careful. This is something very important. Okay. So, ART process, and MAQ process. Okay? ACF, PAC. ACF, PAC. Okay? ACF, PAC. What will happen to the autocorrelation function of the of, of an ARP process will, will become smaller and smaller and smaller. So Dampen out. Okay? What becomes of the partial autocorrelation function? Non zero till lag P and zero subsequent. Correct? Sure? But for the, if you look at the MAQ process, then the ACFs will be. and zero later on. Sure? And the PSEF I must write stationary here. I must write invertible here. Because if, if stationarity invertibility don't work, then this will not work. Now why is this important in life? Why do we need to know this? This is important for a very fundamental reason because we are very often interested in forecasting data. Right? We are interested in forecasting data. How does this help in forecasting? Is this clear? Can I wipe this off? Now you have these records. You don't really need to write things down. Okay? In general, you see, nearly all stationary time series, any stationary time series can be written as an ARMA process. That is, yt can be written as alpha, say, say yt minus 1, plus, say, pi 1, 
This is just an example. This process is an AR process as well as an MA process. This part makes it an AR process. Autoregressive of order 2. Right? Sure? This part makes it an MA process. Right? MA of order 1. So the process autoregressive order 2 in moving average order 1 in general we call this process an ARMA 2 1 process. ARMA 2 1 process. Autoregressive moving average process of order 2 and 1. Right? ARMA 2 1 process. Now the point is if I tell you for example that India GDP follows an ARMA 2 1 process. Okay? So if you know the value of alpha, if you can find the value of phi 1, phi 2 and theta, right, then at e, at, at t minus 1, why t minus 1, you know what is the value of y t minus 1, the current value of GDP, you know what is the value of GDP in the last period, you know what is the shock received by GDP in this period, right, so you will be able to say something about what the value of GDP in, in, in the next period is going to be. Right? Of course, you will not know ET. And therefore, your forecast will differ, the actual value will differ from YT by realization of ET. But ET is, you know, the probability distribution of ET. ET is normally distributed, so you can say that my forecast is y, some forecast, but the actual value of YT will differ along with that depending upon what the value ET takes. Right? Sure? Okay, so up to a point ET, you can actually forecast. Sure? You can actually forecast. And therefore, it's a very, very powerful forecasting tool. Okay, in this case, you can't really do a simple linear regression. Okay, you can't do a linear regression here. Okay, you can't estimate regress yt on yt minus 1, yt minus 2, so on. Because the problem there is, the reason you can't do it is because all of us learnt in this, in this course that if in a regression model, y is equal to alpha plus beta x plus e, if x and e are correlated, then you can't do anything. Right? Then the results are neither unbiased nor consistent. Here the problem is we are saying yt is and therefore in that class we made a very simple assumption. We said let x be fixed from sample to sample. Let x be a non-random variable, y be a random variable, y is equal to alpha plus beta x plus some random shock. So y becomes a random variable. So because x is fixed, e and x cannot get correlated. But here if yt is a random variable, yt minus 1 must also be a random variable. You know that yt minus 1 and theta minus et minus 1 are by definition correlated. Right? Okay? Et and et minus 1 and so, so basically you are not sure whether these data points and the error terms are uncorrelated. You are not sure whether these error terms are uncorrelated. Right? And therefore you can't do a linear regression. But those are if you have to do what is called the maximum likelihood method. If you do a time series course, Okay, time series or time series one kind of courses in your third, fourth semester. Just uh, if you work hard through the semester and actually make it to your third semester, right? Then we can actually, we can actually, you have a chance of learning the max of it. But currently we are saying that we are not going to do a linear regression. A method for maximum likelihood is used, just for your knowledge. So we have an ARMA 2 1 process. Now, why is what we have just learned relevant here? Suppose I want to forecast a process. I want to tell the computer that yt is a dependent variable, say yt minus 1 is an independent variable, yt minus 2 is an independent variable. I have to be able to tell the computer that I want to estimate the parameters alpha, phi 1, phi 2, t. For which I have to tell the computer that I want to estimate the parameters of an ARMA 2 1 process. How do I know whether the data that has been given is an ARMA 2 1 process? So what will I do? I will calculate its ACF, I will calculate its PACF. Suppose I find that the ACF has two, has, you know, has two spikes and then becomes small. Right? The PACF has three spikes and then keeps on becoming smaller. So the PACF has three spikes, it means that Yt is directly coded to its own past three values. So it must be an AR3 process. Right? If the ACF has two spikes, three spikes, two spikes, and then becomes small, then we think that it must be an MA process of order 2, because if MA process will have ACF at lag 2, and otherwise 0. 
So we can say that in all probability, it's an AR3 MA2 process, and therefore ask the computer to estimate those appropriate parameters. This is called identification of an ARMA process. So what we just learned, and of course for identification, the processes have to be stationary and invertible. Right? If invertible is not there, then obviously you know you can't use this logic. Right? So this this works only for stationary and invertible processes. Uh, and uh, so that's how you identify an ARMA process. Okay? How much more time do we have? One half. So I will quickly tell you how we can forecast from this. Okay? Fine? So that we are done with this. Sure? Is this clear? Identification, invertibility, stationarity. If there is so, so what are the implications? If if you have an ARMA process, which is say non-stationary, what is the implication? What does it mean? It means that expectation yt is not well defined, variance yt is not well defined, covariance is not well defined. So this whole story is not going to come into the picture because covariance is auto covariance definition in a proper to taper off with like calculate ka matlab nahi. So it goes out of the way. Right? If you have an AR process and an MA process which is stationary but not invertible, what does it mean? It means that expectation yt exists, variance yt is well defined, covariance yt also it is, it does not depend upon t, it depends only on the gap. But you cannot use these identifying conditions to identify the AR and MA parts because the MA process is non-stationary and if the MA process is non-stationary then the, if there is that equality between you know, the covariance, the, what we saw that chart, that chart does not work out. And therefore, you cannot use these identifying conditions for a non-invertible ARMA process, right? So therefore, to be able to identify and meaningfully talk about this methodology called Box Jenkins methodology, because they developed by the two statisticians Box and Jenkins, you need to have time series which are invertible and stationary, right? But stationary is much more damage. Non-stationary is a much more problematic thing. Because we learned in the last class that if the data are non-stationary, then the expected value of yt is not well defined, variance of yt is not defined. So upon you see that p, f, chi square, z, where of course the thing of that applies. Right? Because you can't apply that. No? How will you think of a standard normal, divide something by the mean, subtract, divide something by the standard deviation, subtract the mean? Because those quantities don't exist simply. Right? So, so those kinds of distributions become a problem. Invertibility is a problem only as far as you cannot write an MM1 process as an infinite order AR process. So identification of an ARMA process becomes the problem. But all MA processes are by definition stationary, by construction, by that idea of this. So the means are well defined, covariances are well defined, variance are well defined and so on. Everybody understood this? Okay, now life becomes simpler. This is really the important conceptual understanding of a time series. Right? Because computers will not be going to give you this conceptual understanding. They'll generate some numbers for you and compute things for you, etc. etc. But what they do has to make sense. Okay? So now let's think of a simple AR1 process with a stationary. 